Jasper's advent and conversion did not stand merely for the conquest of the Orient. However, he also represented its demystification when Vasco da Gama's ships at last led the way through the southeast corner of the Okanemi, penetrating through the ancient imagin imagination or imaginative haze into the clear light of scientific geography. They found on the other side, not the lost tribes of Israel, but a wandering Jew. <laughs> apparently of European and perhaps Iberian origin at that Gasper's return on board was like the black captives coming back from Guinea voyages a symbol of reducing and taking an end of the awesome south and east man okay We're talking about black captives and Gasper back to the moor flow they throwing out the lost tribes of Israel you know because that's what they're looking for but in this case, they just found the wandering Jew. The most dramatic of such demystifications, however, took place a few years later in 1520 when a Portuguese diplomatic mission arrived in Ethiopia. <laughs> Listen up. And the blurred and dreamlike vision of centuries hardened into focus. What the guest found was not the jewel-studded rim of Preston John of legend, but the thatched roof and hewn rock of the kingdom of Lebna Dangle. So they went to that Ethiopia looking for Preston, and instead they find the kingdom of Lebna Dangle. All right, let's go. The mission's priest and chronicler, Francisco Alvarez, was no doubt thinking of the fabulous processions of the former when he described the kingdom of those made by the real life monarch. The monarch who he and the Portuguese continue to refer to as Preston John in spite of everything. So he's trying to tell them, I'm not that Preston you're looking for. They're like, yeah, you are. <laughs> We're going to continue to refer to you as Preston John because you in Ethiopia, you got your kingdom. You must be Preston John, right? He's like, no, I'm just letting them, man. <laughs> it is unbelievable how many people always travel with the court for certainty certainly for a distance of three or four leagues from each place of which they break camp. The people are so numerous and so close that they look like a procession of corpus domini in a great city. The 10th part of them may be well-dressed people and nine parts common people, both men and women, young people and poor, some of them in skins, other in poor clothes and all these common people carry within their property, which all consist of pots for making wine, poor, pouring herbs for drinking. If they move short distances, these poor people carry within their poor dwellings made and thatched as they had them. If they go further, they carry the wood that is some poles, rich men, bring very fine tents. I do not speak of the great lords and great gentlemen because each of these moves a city or a good town of tents and loads <laughs> and people on mules and a matter without numbering or reckoning. So they move it together. They, they tribe up rich and poor, everybody eating. If they go short distance, they just take the, the house. They just pick up the house and take it. If they go in the long distance, they carry the wood so they can build a new house. I mean, that's how Naga's building Nagavi. I do not know what to say of those on foot. We Portuguese often talk of these mules because in the winter, the court does not move with less than 50,000 mules. And from that upwards, they might reach 100,000. 100,000 mules are most impressive, but not in the way of the same number of cavalry men such as the legendary Preston John brought in his train so and they're like he, he might not be Preston because he only has a hundred thousand mules but Preston got a hundred thousand cavalry men at all times right it was this mission that finally learned the whereabouts of Pero de Colvinha who had not been heard from since his parting with Rabbi Abraham at Ormuz nearly 30 years before he was living in Ethiopia as the courier to the king, a kind of Marco Polo of the South, but with one important difference, he was not permitted to leave. So the, 
whatever Khan took him in in Ethiopia, whatever Ethiopia he was in, said, nah, you ain't gonna leave because you might tell everybody where I'm at. You can't leave. <laughs> so he told his whole story to Alvarez, how in 1493, he traveled by land until he reached the Prester John. I'm sorry. Didn't Columbus supposedly find us in 1492? So at the same time, the Nag is being discovered in America, Preston John is being discovered in Ethiopia. I'm seeing some phantoms and some duplications, man. Let's go. And he came to the court and gave his letter to the King Alexander, who was then reigning. And he said that he received them with much pleasure and joy and said that he would send them to his country with much honor about the time he died and his brother Nahum Ray. Nahum, okay, sounding like some Hebrew flow. Who also received him with much favor and when he asked to leave, leave to go, he would not give it. So he said, look, man, my, my bro wouldn't let you leave. I ain't going to let you leave. <laughs> and Nahum died. And his son, David, Lebna Dangle ran. So now Lebna Dangle comes to the picture, son of Nahum, also called David, who now reigns. And he says he also asked him for leave, and he would not give it, saying that he had not come in his time and his predecessors had given him lands and lordships to rule and enjoy, and that leave he would not would not give him. And so he remained. Alvarez adds his own observation, saying that Colvin, had, Colvin Han was given a wife with very great riches and possessions. He had son, he had sons by her, and we saw them in our time when he saw that we wanted to leave a passion a passionate desire to return to his country came upon him. He went to ask the leave of the Presta and we went with him and we urged it with great insistence and begged it of him, yet no order for it was ever given. So he's like, look, I can't let you leave because you might snitch on us and everybody gonna come looking for us, but I'm gonna give you land, I'm gonna give you riches, I'm gonna give you a wife. <laughs> You got everything, man, all right? But you can't leave, <laughs> you can't leave. So he too was a living symbol of demystification of the East, ending like the legend of Presta John in the Abyssinian Death. in the Abyssinian dust. Why did the legend of Preston John end in the Abyssinian dust? With that legend went for the time being all hope of a noble image of the Negro to counter the one that was coming with growing force out of West Africa body bag for the illusion. 